You're watching Chewing the Club with Mike Benyon Rowe and Sharon West. And that's when I even noticed that he'd gone up there and twisted. And, oh, hello and welcome to Chewing the Cud. This week we welcome our special guest host, Sharon West. Hi, Sharon. Hello, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm marvellous, thank you very much. Thank good. You. Are you enjoying the, the, the ambience of the, the surroundings? It's fabulous. I absolutely love it. It's very sparkly. It's very sparkly. Mm. Yes. Some very interesting pieces on those shelves. You're referring to the giant green penis, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. in my eye shot. <laughs> <at the moment. laughs> That's okay. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> but what have you got for us in this showbiz this week? Well, Mac, this week I'm bringing a story about a 30th anniversary. Oh, interesting. Well, on screen now you can see all the ways of getting hold of us. It's at The Could TV on social media where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website, and on YouTube and podcast services, look for Chewing The Could and hit subscribe. And as a name of people who have reached out and slid into our DMs, go along the bottom of the screen. We go to Mike now and the buzz. How do you feel about holidays? Oh, I love a holiday. Favourite place to go? Um, Greece is a bit of a favourite of mine. Nice. Mm. Yes. Quite a few places that have been in Greece. Would like to go back again very soon. Mm, just cos... <laughs> Just because what? <laughs> Just couldn't resist. Just couldn't resist. Um, well, you know, the, the rule about you, how you can only take certain amounts of fluids with you. Yeah, like yeah. 100 go mils 100, is it 100 mils? 100 yeah. mils, clear bottles and all that. Yeah. Well, the exciting news is that airports could soon ditch that. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, so they're looking at around about 2024. Yeah. They're looking at getting rid of that rule. Right. Um, and basically because he said... It's not really relevant anymore. Technology's moved on so much that they don't need it. Bag just, scanning and all bag that. Bag scanning, kind of thing, yeah. chemical tra tracing, all that sort of stuff. So they're going, yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine. Go for it. That save you loads of time at airport. It's going to save me a lot of effort. And panic. Of yeah. And um, the last time I went away was to, to Rome on my own, oh, which was quite nice. Yeah. Um, and I did get the, bot the clear bottle of hand sanitizer and clear bottle of lube mixed up. What, while you were on holiday? While I was on holiday, at an intimate oh. moment, hand sanitizer. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, no, no. No. A bit stingy. Very stingy. <laughs> kind of a mood killer. Yeah, to be imagine. fair. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah. Thankfully, it wasn't the tiger bomb. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to mean that we could take all sorts of fluids with us on holiday. Okay. Well, it just makes me think about, you know, when you're packing, mm -hmm. about the time that it takes me now to think, oh, I've got that in my bag, I've got that in this bag, I need to take that out of there and put that in there mm -hmm. for when I'm actually going through security. You're not going to have to do any of that. Oh. <sighs> Relaxing part of the holiday <laughs> instead of a stressful part of the holiday. See, I, I quite enjoy packing. Yeah. I pack three or four times before I go. Are you a little bit on the OCD side? It's not OCD, I just like to have a pre-pack, a practice pack and a pre-practice pack. OCD, so. No, it's not OCD. <laughs> <laughs> it's not OCD. <laughs> it's just so when I'm coming back, I know how everything goes back in the suitcase. Do you take a photograph? No, I just remember it because I've done it three times. OK. Concerning, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait till the rest of the show is uh, the buzzing. <laughs> um, do you ever get public transport? No, not really. No. I, don't, I don't tend to use it very much because, I, obviously, I drive. Mm -hmm. And where I work, I tend to just make my cars park there for the day, so I don't... Maybe the train sometimes. Right, OK. Just well, like if I fancy a day out and I want a little tipple now and again. OK, all, all long distance. Yeah. Yeah, because if I'm going site from Manchester to London, I don't want to drive. No. I'll go on the train. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're going on the train things, do you pay via an app or do you pay all ticket style? I usually pre-book my tickets online. Yeah. OK. Well, that's, that's good because a warning has come out after a woman has been detained by the police for fare dodging. Right. After she's paid for it on the app. Right, so, but you've got the proof on your phone or... Now, here's the thing. Um, poor Stephanie, who was 28, was felt like a criminal as her app crashed and wouldn't load up again. Right. So, because she couldn't prove she'd bought a ticket, she was taken away to a police station. <gasps> That's a little bit extreme. Um, when she finally got the, the banking app up to say that she'd paid the £6.70 on the train app... Yeah. They're going, well, it's not a, it's not a ticket, it doesn't count. You could have paid for someone else's ticket. Really? Yeah. Well, that just makes you question then about how you should actually pay for your tickets then, about whether you should... Because on, on occasion, I have actually got on the train and paid on the train, mm -hmm. which is usually a time thing, because I'm always late. Yeah. So getting on the train and paying is just like, at least I know I've done it. But then also, I have got on trains where I've got on to pay 
and there's been no ticket person. Mm -hmm. So you've ended up going to where you're going and not actually paying for a ticket. But then if you come somewhere like Manchester or Leeds, you have to go through a gate with a ticket. Yeah. So if you've not got a ticket... You're screwed. Exactly. And yeah. if you've not got it on the app, or if mm -hmm. you have got it on the app, and the question in that... Yeah. Um, mm. So basically, it turned out because she was having phone problems. Yeah. So she had no network coverage, so she couldn't download the app and get it again and get the, the ticket up. And they were yeah. saying, well, you can't prove it. Um, and then she kicked up a bit of a fuss. Yeah. She didn't go, oh, really sorry, how about pay the extra seven, six pound again and, off a little. and deal with it later? Yeah, when the police are asked to remove you from a train. Yeah. You've not done that politely. Still feel sorry for her, though. Pretty embarrassing. Well, it's embarrassing, but yeah, don't kick off if you get left out by te technology. Yeah. Please, we'll remove you. Just saying. Um, <laughs> and if um, you've done something illegal and want to share it with us, just at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Chocolate oranges. You used to love them. Mm -hmm. Now, not quite so much. What's changed? I, um, I just think that maybe I've, I've had them that often and that for that long right. that they're now not my favourite. They're very Christmas, though, aren't they? They are very Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And they're now going worldwide. It used to be a very British thing. Yeah. Going all over the world. Right. Right. Including into America... Well, sorry, New Zealand. Yeah? Yeah. Where Jazz Thornton, already don't like it because of the name, um, <laughs> has shared a TikTok video of her eating a chocolate orange. OK. Um, as she would a normal orange. Like so? So she just tried to just jam it in her face and eat it like an orange. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. No, exactly. Horrified yes. is the word. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she, she was there saying, my friend from England um, brought me this and I just uh, just unboxed it. Does and she you not must know the it. tap it, unwrap it? There's a sticker on the top that says tap to unwrap. <sighs> oh, no. So, I that don't know what looks, she's thinking. That's just wrong on so many levels. You think that's wrong? Yeah. Is it? Oh, is it? I like it. It's segment. They're in segments for a reason. <laughs> to, not, to not be eaten in that manner, that, that that is why they're in segments. But, I mean, it stops you having to share it with people. Just lick the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much Before that. you tap it, lick it, then... then... <laughs> or would you lick, then tap? I, I think licking, then tapping would be a better option. No, because you've got to tap it before you unwrap it, haven't you? You can rewrap it. I suppose you could, oh, yeah. Bit of foil. Put a warning sticker on, this has been licked prior <laughs> yeah. to... <laughs> I'd go around showing people. <laughs> <laughs> so that that would horrify you if someone did that. Yeah, it, yeah, it looks ridiculous. Now, I sometimes get in trouble for the way I eat things. In in respect to what? So, okay. I have I have something here. Oh dear. Okay. You've got one each. I love a little Kit Kat. Oh, I love a Kit Kat. You love a Kit Kat. I do. Okay. Eat a Kit. How would you eat your Kit Kat? I uh, I do it a finger at a time. Okay. So like so, and like so. Okay. I'm not that I'm person. Bite it. Mm. So I, I see. I was always told that a Kit Kat is a bar of chocolate. Mm. Oh, you're going to bite it, aren't you? Oh no! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bar. It's in segments. Look, a finger at a time, so you can actually just have it so, a bit no, at so a time. Ignoring the fact it says multi pack. <laughs> I've, bought, I've bought them on the cheap. How many have you eaten? A multi-pack bar. It's not a bar, really. It's a bar. It? A bar is a block thing. This is a block. I'm totally separate out. It's a block. No, 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 no. no. Look, it's segmented. It's got, like, snappy-offy bits. Oh, good God. Philistine. What? <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to do things that is not the way. It's a way. It's your way. Yeah, <laughs> I think it tastes perfectly fine. It probably tastes exactly the same, but it just looks weird. Uh, it's your conditioning. But I mean, it maybe, must that's, be. maybe that's what Jazz was doing with a chocolate orange. I still think it's wrong, and that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Got a very angry point then. <laughs> very wrong. A little bit scared. It's like your mum telling me off. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon. <laughs> um, I'm not going to keep eating look, it like look, that. Look, mine's still intact, look. Mine's still intact. It's not. It is. You've broken the chocolate on that end, and it just looks a mess. <laughs> 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 Don't do that again. That's the way I eat them, though. I've been eating them that way for years. I'm sorry. Have other people commented on your... Yeah. And what have they said? I once had someone slap me. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do that, because I'm live television, you could li see. Literally walked over and went, that's wrong. I walked off. 
What See, someone I know? Shake hands with that person. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh. On that chocolatey, de delicious note, that's all from the buzz this week. Thanks for that, Mike. The the chocolate uh, segment was uh, very interesting. Thank you. I need some support over the break because um, <laughs> I feel I'm going to get a slap. Um, but coming up next, we have Sharon in the showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Sharon and Mike. Now let's go over to Sharon and the showbiz news. Thank you very much. Well, the first uh, story of this week is, I mentioned earlier on about a 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And you might not be able to believe this, but it's actually the 30th anniversary of the film The Bodyguard. No, it's not. It really is. No, it can't be. Because 30... that came out in 1992. Yes. And I was 10. Yes. And I refused to be 10 plus 30. Which you are. Not yet, I'm not. Well, you're nearly. No. Very, very nearly. <laughs> no, not, not yet at all. No, <laughs> like 20 years off that. But there's actually been a couple of um, special sort of screenings okay. over the last the beginning of this month. Um, so that was actually the film where Whitney made her acting debut uh, for this particular one. Um, and obviously alongside Kevin Costner... Mm -hmm. And um, what's happening next is there's going to be a special vinyl release of the Bodyguard original soundtrack. And that's, mm. that's just been released, so it was released on the 18th of November and will also include the, the most famous song probably from that film. Dolly Parton's I Will Love You. I Will Always Love You. Exactly. Dolly Parton's version's better. Which apparently... Do, th do you think...? 100%. Yeah, you're a bit of a Dolly fan. Well, not really, I just prefer Dolly's version of that song. Right. <laughs> it just works, it's yes. But it does say on here that in the sign of how beloved the song is, the music video for the track surpassed one billion views on YouTube in 2020. Right. So the song itself has been absolutely huge. During a pandemic. Exactly. Well, yeah, I think everything had a bit oh, of a boost during yeah. pandemic time. <laughs> well, so that man. He's, he's aged a bit, yeah. <laughs> I would say. That's, so obviously that's Kevin Costner, yeah. looking very young and handsome on the left. And very, it doesn't actually look like him on the right, to be fair. That's not a. Maybe it's the glasses. Maybe it's the glasses hiding the Maybe it's the glasses. The yeah. Yeah. He's not aged massively. He does look well. Considering it's 30 years. Yeah, so I'm trying to work out how old he'll be now. 30 years older than he was in the body. I don't know. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> 25. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's going to say, and he's been in a lot of things since, hasn't he? Mm. So he's, he's been, uh, he's had a very good career, let's mm -hmm. say. But yeah, so there's quite a lot of uh, a lot of songs that came out of that particular show. I think Queen of the Night were my favourite. Yes, I had to think about it. Which one I yeah, say. it was a little bit, um, a bit more dancey and punchy. Yeah. Mm. So, and obviously we lost Win Whitney quite uh, quite a while ago now, um, but her songs yeah. live on. They do. And there the was some and the really good film, songs. The film itself mm -hmm. was probably one of my favourites around about that time because I was a huge Whitney fan. So I really did. I loved all of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. Eight, I'm an 80s girl, so it's 80s music. So Whitney was like, like the epiphany, epiphany of the 80s. With big bows. And the... Big hair. Big, big hair. Bows. Yeah. Yeah, big hair, big songs mm -hmm. and big personality. And she was just like iconic as a performer. Mm -hmm. And I think there's still a lot of people who try to emulate her now. I think you'd talk to people like... Um, or look at people like Beyonce. Yeah. She will say that people like Whitney influenced her singing career. So, uh, but yeah, thinking that this particular film is now 30 years old makes me feel pretty ancient. It's yeah, a bit of a... Me too. <laughs> right, so moving swiftly on. Moving swiftly on. Make us feel young Moving again, swiftly young again. on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are you a fan of the West End? I've, I've been known to enjoy a West End before now. I do like a, sh like a theatre show. Or a musical. Oh, OK, yes. Yes, I don't, I don't mean... No, we're having slightly different conversations here. Be, yeah. So, yeah, um, I think <laughs> West End shows, I've seen quite a few, love musical theatre. Mm -hmm. um, one of the shows that's played in this country for the longest is Mousetrap. Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. Nice. Um, and it's now set to make its debut on Broadway. Oh, so after 70 years of performances, I've, I've, I've actually looked up how many performances there were, mm -hmm. 29,000 performances of that show uh, in London. So from the, the, there's only one piece of a, from the original set, which was from 1952, okay. and that's actually been loaned to the theatre in New York for the show. 
Nice. Uh, and which opens in 2023. Um, so there we go. There's the, a photograph of the original stage show where Mary Law actually played uh, the leading role in 1957. Wow. So it's quite, it's quite um, interesting to think that a show's been around for that, that, that long, length yeah. of time. And you, you don't even think about it. You yeah. don't, do you? It's just, it's just like being the show that's on. just constantly been on. It's one I've not seen, so I maybe need to correct that. Uh, it's a good show. Is it? It's a good show. Um, it's, if you like Agatha Christie. So I like, like Agatha Christie. Yeah, like Poirot and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. All show. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. she's she's very... Uh, I think I'll, I've liked all the, the newer stuff that's been on TV in relation to... Because there's been mm. a few... Is it um, something with knives? I can't remember the... It's one of hers. But there's been a, there's been a few of hers that have been televised and they've been really, really good. So I think, yeah, maybe I need I to keep myself up the yeah. bum and get myself tickets for Mousetrap. Before so I can say I've America. seen it in before England it before America. it goes to America. Yeah, yeah. in 2023. Yeah. Oh, well. Right, and the final story, the, the, the big one, which actually it makes me laugh my socks off, uh, Louis Capaldi, character... Yes. <laughs> ..is an understatement. Um, he's been doing um, an advert for ASOS, um, where he's actually taken over as a creative director for the video. OK. Um, <laughs> it, 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 there he, oh, there he is, look at him. The sweetheart. It's actually a change to see him in clothes because normally yeah, his, his videos is in his pants. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's actually wearing ASOS clothing to promote that. But on the actual um, advert, mm -hmm. he, some of the st stuff that he does is hilarious. So he's basically telling uh, one model that she needs to uh, look happy but have a sadness inside. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, to be fair, that's the sort of thing you hear, hear of uh, photo shoots, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's very, pecu it's a peculiar thing. But I'm, yeah, I'm sure that photographers say very weird things yeah. when people are actually having, having photographs done. So, um, so we had to direct a male model uh, and a female model, and then obviously did a little bit of his own. This is an example of what he was telling them they needed to do, <laughs> the poses that they need, needed to do. And actually watching the video was really, really funny. So he said, uh, the male model, he told him to pose like he was on a hinge date, but the girl hadn't arrived. <laughs> so make of that what you will. And, uh, and interpreting that would be quite interesting, I would yeah. imagine. Um, but he did quite a few photos of himself doing like various uh, poses because he was trying to promote positive body image. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that obviously... He's not the slimmest of people and he can wear what he wants to. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, feeling comfortable in wearing, being fashionable and wearing items that everybody can wear. 100%. I mean, that, that does look like a comfy top. It does look like a very comfy top. And also the trousers do. The cords. Look, the cords back in. The cords back in this year. I'm, I'm really quite not sure. Um, and then it basically captioned his collaboration, collaboration on Instagram with got a new gig as ASOS creative director because I'm finally being recognised for the fashion icon that I am. <laughs> <laughs> and as you say, he spends most of his time in his pants. Well, this so, is so it. He must have very fashionable pants. But, well, no, have you seen the pants? The big Y fronts on, on his latest video. He's, laid, he's, on a, he's in a pool, okay. laid on a lilo in big white Y fronts. So comfy pants as well. Comfy pants, but not necessarily fashionable <laughs> pants. Unless huge wire fronts have become a thing. Maybe they've become a thing. And what are you wearing today? Are you wearing huge white ones? No. Well, there you go. So are, they, the, <laughs> are you wearing any at all? So what else has Lewis Capaldi been up to? <laughs> <laughs> Releasing songs and stuff. Uh, obviously, he's, like I say, he's a cat. He actually did come out fairly recently saying that he's been um, diagnosed as having Tourette's, mm -hmm. um, which was something that he, th he said he thought he was just a bit sweary. Um, <laughs> and then he's obviously found out that there's more to it than that, and it's yeah. uh, it's been quite an interesting journey for him to understand that and the way that he's reacted to certain things and how he's been very outspoken, possibly, possibly not in a, the most... A grammatically correct way. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's actually he wore some rather weird clothing on this particular um, shoot. Mm -hmm. So he was wearing um, a cut out hot pink gown. That's going to be exposing. Yeah, a fur coat, which well, we all like a bit of faux, don't yeah. we? Uh, some PVC trousers and a chainmail sweater. 
oh, that's going to get on the nips, that. And that's what I was thinking. And if it's and if it's cold out, that's going to be cold. It's cheese grater. Ah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you sort of like wanted some cheese grating. Yeah, but I, but not on your... No. no. Now it's no. making me feel a bit uh, cringy. Um, yeah, and so basically he's, he had a one-off chance to do the thing in the studio and I think it's been a bit of a hit because it's had quite a lot of views on YouTube. Um, which, to be fair, everything that he does is literally has a lot of hits on YouTube because he's a popular guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's funny. He's a very funny man. Yeah. A very funny man. That's good. Fabulous. Nice. So that's all from the Showbiz News. Thank you very much for that, Sharon. Oh, it's nice to know that, you know, other people have nip issues too. <laughs> but stick around because coming up next we have our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we're going to play Faster Hind, and this one is for our lyrical legend Sharon. So off you go. Watch your head. Game of the Week. And so Sharon's going to ask me a, a selection of questions, and I'm going to try and get them right. <laughs> Are you ready, Sharon? Oh, born ready. Oh, well, at least one of us was. Um, so, do you want to give me my first options? Uh, let's have a look. You can either choose between science and invention or the arts and music. Ooh, I'm going to go for the arts and music. OK. So, in the Harry Potter series, uh, what is Green Gots? I once had that. You had to get antibiotics to clear it up. Not um, good. I believe it's a shop. <sighs> da, da, da. No, it's actually yeah. a bank. Oh, OK. Yeah. Well, you you can you kind of go buy things in a bank. You can't buy things in a bank. You give you get them money. The money you get to buy things. You get a little slip that says you give money. I bought a piece of paper, surely. Okay. If that's yeah, you are really st stretching it there. But let, okay. Would you like another one? Yes. Why not? Okay. So let's go for sports and pastimes, or entertainment and celebrity. Ooh, I like a bit of entertainment, please. Entertainment. So, in the 2009 series of I'm a Celebrity, who replaced Camilla Dallarup? <sighs> I would not have known. I, I've not watched I'm a Celebrity get me a career for a very long time. Um, Camilla? Yeah. Is that not the name of the Queen Consort? It is, but it wasn't her. It wasn't her. Dallarup is a surname. Dial her up. Da oh, don't even dial know her up. Why am I dial dialing her up? up? <laughs> Why am I phoning her if I don't even know her? <laughs> um, I think she was replaced by Aunt McPartland. No. No. Sadly not. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe Bugner. Oh, Joe. How, how did you not know that? Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe. Oh, how I didn't you know, think about how did Joe. You not know that. Oh, okay then. So, geography and nature, or history and religion. Oh, I'm going to go for history. OK, so, which French wartime leader said Waterloo will erase the memory of all of my victories? Napoleon. Yay! Yay! Da, da, da. Only because I saw the, <laughs> the castle, I saw the answer. I cheated, if I don't mind admitting it. <laughs> just a tad. Just a tad, just cheated. <laughs> so, let's go for science invention or sports and pastimes. Well, I'm a very sporty person. Ovs. Mm. So I'm going to go for sports and pastimes, please. OK. Formula One driver Sebastian Vettel is from which country? Um, Sebastian Vettel. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. It could Might be, be Vettel. Vettel. Type of water, that, isn't it? Vettel. Vettel. Or say Italy. No. Spain. No. You can't have more France. than one. Stop it. Stop it. Wagner Regis. You've got one go. <laughs> <laughs> Germany is oh, the answer to close. that question. You were that nowhere was... near. You were nowhere near. OK. So I'm going to choose your random questions now and not give you a choice. Oh, OK. OK. So in motorcycling, the 500cc class gave way to which new class in 2002? 504. 600. It's not a number. Not a number? No. The bike go very fast class. 
Vroom, class. Vroom. Vroom. The Doppler effect. <laughs> no, it's MotoGP. Oh, yeah, MotoGP. Yeah. So, next one, I've got an arts and music question for you. Oh, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with these. OK. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> uh, which Jerry Lee Lewis hit contained the, li the line... I can't even say it. Which Jerry Lee Lewis hit contained the line... You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. No, 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 no. Too Great much. balls of fire. Yay! It's obviously my singing that gave you that, weren't it? It was, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you've not had a science question. OK. So I'm going to give you a science question. Oh, the sandwich was invented in which country? Now, you see there's contention about this, because I had a rant about it. So, officially, it was invented in England by the Earl of Sandwich. Yes, it was. Why it's called then, it's called the fourth Earl of Sandwich, in fact. However, people have been p putting food on bread for years. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> He's just advertised it a lot better than anybody else. Like, and named it after himself. Yeah, he's going, oh, what's that do What's that it's... guy eating? Oh, he's eating a sandwich. No, he's not. He's having something on bread. Been doing that for years. Our first, fourth oil invented it. Oh, he didn't. <laughs> well, can I just say, for, for, the, for the answer purposes, it was, it was England. OK. So you got it right, even though it was contentious. Yay. Are you happy? Not really, because no. it's a wrong question. Wrong. <laughs> So, what was the currency of Italy before the introduction of the euro? Come on, no. Turkish was the same one, same name. When did the euro come in? I don't know. Gallery? 2002. Yeah. Turkey still used something called the same. So no Spain was the potato. No, that's Spanish. What's that? Spain, Spain's potatoes. French were Franks. Yeah. Germany were Deutschmarks. Yeah. So I'm going to say the olives. <laughs> no, <laughs> lira. That doesn't sound Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the, the carbonara. I love the I love the working out was very <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Right, better. entertainment and celebrity. <laughs> okay. What does the Spanish name of David and Victoria Beckham's son Cruz, born in February 2000, mean in English? Cruising. No. <laughs> I sort of knew that's where you were gonna go with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just... In English, it means getting. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Sharon. It means getting the <laughs> public. That's not what it says on the card. Is it not? No. Um, is it to go in a boat? No. Drive really slowly around. No. Cruise is spelled C R U Z. Um, that's really not helped. <laughs> Surprisingly, no. it's no. a shape. It's a shape. It begins with the same two letters. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm giving... Circle. Begin, beginning with CR. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Banana? <sighs> a cross. Oh, a cross. I was thinking crescent kind of thing with a banana. A crescent? Was that yeah. what you were thinking? Crescent shape? Yeah. Oh, well, you didn't say that. You said banana. Yeah, well, it's a banana shape. I couldn't think of the word crescent. I was just thinking of the word banana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. a special pebble, I know. The Phones View Arena is a popular boxing venue in which northern English city? Went bankrupt years ago, it doesn't count anymore. It doesn't matter, where was it? it it's the AO Arena in Manchester. There you go. Yes. You're being very political and, I am. and I'm, stroppy. I'm, what? I'm being stroppy because I can, because it's the only way I get questions right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're like pivoting the question yes, slightly. Exactly. exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to change the question a little bit so I can get the answer right. <laughs> It's not cheating, it's cre creative answers. OK, if that, that's your... Yeah, OK. Yes. We'll go with that, we'll go with that. Uh, so, which famous battle did ABBA top the charts with in 1974? Oh, please. Are you, how I expect you to burst this one out as soon as I said it. It's... Balaclava? A battle, the Battle of Balaclava? Yeah. Was that a thing? Yeah. Gallery, was that a thing? 
Is it? <laughs> battle, yeah. <laughs> battle of the Boing. It weren't that I one. Love the name. I love the name of that Abba, I think Abba, 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 Abba songs, Abba songs. Abba songs, Abba songs. My whole life could be an Abba song. Well, obviously not. Because <laughs> you don't know this one. <laughs> Fernando. No! How would you feel if you won the war? I had won a war. Promise to love you forevermore. Du -dun, du -dun, du -dun. See, I know you're singing Waterloo, but... There you go! That's the song! <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose, didn't you? Just to... So, what is the name of the desert tribe that live as Bedouins in the Bayuda Desert in Sudan? You obviously know this one is dead easy. <laughs> I want to say the Bedouins. Well, it's not. <laughs> and, and to be fair, that's a bit of a tragic question because I don't know if any. Did you know the answer to this gallery? It's the, it's the Manasseh. Uh, As if you didn't know that. <sighs> Disappointed in myself. Entertainment's question. OK. Who is Matt Damon's best friend? Currently married, married to Jennifer Lopez. See, I was going to say that, that Batman guy, but he, he got divorced, didn't he? I'm saying nothing. What's his name? Not Robert Pattinson, the other one. Not Christian Bale, because he was hot. Yeah, he was, actually. What's his name? Can't remember. Ben Affleck. Huh? Ben Affleck. That's the one, Ben Affleck. They are they're back together again. Are they? Yeah. Oh. You're not keeping up with your celebrity gossip, are you? I don't do the celebrity gossip. No, obviously not. <laughs> and geography and nature. Uh-huh. Which of the American national parks was the world's first when it was created by Congress in 1872? Yellowstone. Yogi Bear lives there. Yellowstone. Yay! Yeah. That's also where the supervolcano is going to erupt and kill us all. Um, but that's enough for now, because coming up next we have our spotlight section. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to spend some time getting all up close and personal with Sharon in Spotlight. So how have you enjoyed yourself today? Oh, I love coming here. It's Good. lovely. It's, uh, the, the, it's very atmospheric, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> oh, there's tat is the word I use. Tat! Yeah, yeah it's may, very maybe. Sale. Interesting objects, let's, let's say that, but I do love the setup. It's really, really nice. Good, lovely. And the gallery, gallery are lovely chaps. How much did they pay you? Um, they pay me in Kit Kats. So people that might not be aware of your work. Yes. You're a, you're a singist. I am, yes. So I have um, I've been writing and recording music probably for quite a long time. I've, I've, I was listening to bands for a long time okay. um, and then started writing and recording in 2016. So I had an album out in 2018, um, which did pretty well, to be fair, um, in my little circle of uh, popularity and um and i'm now working more with djs and recording house music and um sort of stuff for for, for clubs rather than it being more sort of commercial stuff nice so so what kind of music do you you, you create so at the moment because the stuff that i did before was everything from sort of dance and pop to ballad so i did a bit of a mixture of stuff now the stuff that i'm working on is more house music sort of focus, funky disco stuff, that kind of thing. So nice. more my cup of tea. It's probably the kind of stuff that I like to listen to as well, to be fair. So a bit of a bop. A bit of a bop, yeah, I like a foot tapper. <laughs> not while you're driving, hopefully. Uh, no, 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 no. I try not to do that. <laughs> so, I'm listening to some music speeding in the car. Up it's up definitely, up. definitely a car journey, some, some of those songs. Oh, yeah. Sitting on there going, crank that up. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely. yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so have you got any music you said? Any music coming out soon? Well, I've just had one come out called Walking Away, mm -hmm. um, which was with a DJ called Paul Roberts, and that was out um, sort of the middle of November. Mm -hmm. um, but it was only available to, to DJs because at the moment a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is is, is aimed at the DJ market. So okay. they, they sort of they'll start playing stuff in their sets in clubs, and then people will like, oh, what's this song? And and hopefully get a bit of interest in that, and then fingers crossed it gets a bit of commercial airplay because <clears throat> that's a hard thing yeah. to sort of get involved in. Um, and I'm literally in the process of... I've just recorded vocals for a new one, and that will be out imminently. Ooh, that's And that exciting. one is called 
Uh, how can I forget what my own song's called? You'd be surprised. <laughs> Love, me, Love Me For The Night, it's called. OK. So, obviously, you can imagine what that's sort of about. Sounds like my life turned. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, um, so if any DJs are watching, how would they get hold of, of your uh, stuff? I'm on uh, Instagram as at West is Music. I am on at, um, at West is Music again on Twitter and Facebook. Um, or you can just look up Sharon West on, on Google and, and it will bring up me and another woman called Sharon West who's in America who sort of creates whale music. That's not me. <laughs> so so no, no, no whale music No whale clubs. music for me and no, 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 no whale music in clubs for just for now anyway. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, where you can find me. I'm pretty much everywhere on socials. Brilliant. Yeah. I, and you're not just a, a, a musical masterpiece. Ooh. You also do like, other work, don't you? I do all kinds of things. So um, I like to do a bit of guest presenting from time to time. Do you really? Yeah, do, well, yeah. We might have you on the show for a Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I do a bit of extra work as well. So I do like walk on parts and stuff for, for TV. And I've just, um, about a month ago, I did um, a walk on part for a show that's coming up, I think it's February time, for the BBC called Better. Ooh. Um, so you have to watch out for me drinking gin. Fake gin in a bar. Oh, fake gin. Um, and uh, having spit. hilarious conversations with people in restaurants because that's, that's what I was doing <laughs> for, for, uh, for my little walk on part. Nice. Yeah, which I really quite enjoy. You meet some really nice people. Who have you met that's like super duper famous? Um, I've met, well, to be fair, I've met more people doing the singing than I have doing the acting because I'm not very, I'm not very aware of who people are. Right. I, don't, I don't know if that's just me because I, I don't watch a lot of TV because I don't mm. have time. So I tend to be aware of it. I think, oh, I know them from something, but I can't work out where I know them from. Mm -hmm. So the actors, uh, one of one of the actors that was in um, this particular uh, 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 this uh, drama uh, was on Peaky Blinders, okay. um, but I can't remember his character's name. And the the girl that was playing the main part, uh, she's been in all kinds of things. Um, I watched her in a something about lawyers a while ago. Can't remember the name of the uh, the the. Uh, of the show, which played with somebody called Nicola Walker, who I really like as an actress. Um, and she was playing a lawyer in this particular thing. So, you know, when you actually see people in mm. lots of different things, but you're not very aware of what the name is. I'm yeah. rubbish with names. Abs what, what's your name again? Bob. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really <laughs> yeah, really rubbish, really rubbish with names. Um, just because uh, I, I always have been. Mm -hmm. I always have been. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, uh, I sort of like, mm, I've met um, famous people wise, I met. Des O'Connor, who was really absolutely lovely. I did a pilot show for a uh, something called Potter Gold years ago, okay. which was like a music, a bit like a talent show. Right. Um, I've met um, Chubby Brown because uh, I did some <laughs> uh, when I was in a band. We did some uh, stage and theatre stuff. Right. So he was uh, like we were a warmer pack for him. Um, not many people of note. Although I did, I did, uh, I did insult Mick Hucknall. Easily um, done. <laughs> in, in a restaurant in Manchester, just basically, I was a little bit on the tipsy side and asked him to move. And then um, and then I was stood in a, I don't know if you remember a bar called Dry from back in, back in the day, years ago, in Manchester. I used to have friends in Stockport. I don't remember Dry Bar at all. No, of course you don't. And I was stood there staring, and obviously I was under the influence I'd had with drink, mm -hmm. and looking at this man... Obviously, scrutinising him a little bit, and he just went, Sean Ryder. And I just went, Yeah, and walked off and said to my friend, Oh, Sean Ryder. And she went, Well, he's this lead singer with a happy Monday. So I was like, Oh, <laughs> I, I could have been, you know, I could have been the, what's her name? Ra, ra, ra. What the, the call the woman who sang with him? Rowetta. I could have been Rowetta, couldn't I? could have been Rowetta. And obviously, what do I do? A shout in his face, so maybe I've let that ship sailed. Because <laughs> so of my the, the story is maybe not drink so much. <laughs> don't drink so much, and don't approach celebrities when you've had a drink. Yeah, well, I, I just approach everybody when I've had a drink. It's better. Oh, Billy Ocean, I've met him a few times. Very nice man. Um, he waves at me now when we go to gigs. That's nice. Ocean wave. <laughs> Ocean wave. Sorry, gallery's being silly in me here. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said, whoop, ocean wave. Yeah. Back in your box. Back in your box, back yes, box. get back in your box. Enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, so you do a lot of gigs. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. What kind of gigs do you do? Do you perform a lot of prides, maybe? I, I've not I managed, to be fair, I've, I've been gutted this year because I've not really managed to do any because I've been so busy with other things. Mm. So I've spent so much time in the studio because um, it's not just an hour here and an hour there. You're sort of in and you're in for a day. 
um, yeah. because you, you, you sort of like spend quite a lot of time. I, I like to get things right, but I also want things to sound like me. I don't okay. want to like have stuff that's over processed so people think, oh, it could be anybody's thing. And I want it to sound like it's me. Um, so it's just getting. I, I do re sing quite a lot of stuff until I get it how I want to. Right. So literally, once you're in the studio, you can be there for hours on end. And the, the producer that I work with that records my vocals usually goes, "Oh God, no! I can't, I'm far too busy. I can't, I can't fit you in <laughs> because he knows because he knows literally I'm going to be there for quite a long time and I'm going to be picky and I'm going to be not even remotely obnoxious, but a little bit sort of like pushy. Saying demanding's a good word. Um, so because I do like things done. Properly. Yeah, well, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's your art, isn't it? Yeah, and you're, it's me that's it's putting it out under my name and, and stuff like that. So the newest one that I'm doing, that's with the same DJ that I worked with last time. And I want to be able to send what I've done to him so he can mix the track mm -hmm. and not have to do work on the vocals because I've done what I want with him and he's happy with what I've done. Great. So, yeah, very lengthy time in the studio. <laughs> Great. Um, so we're going to bring out our jar of joy now. Which is, is hideous. Um, <laughs> oh, look at that. Does, does it light up? Um, it used to light up. It's not very well. Oh, is it? There's a battery gone. The battery's gone. Um, yeah, it's not tacky. OK, so put the charger there. Fabulous. Beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely stunning, yeah. It's a choice. Yes. Um, so let's reach in and grab a question. This is like a pile of randomness, I'm assuming. Pile of randomness, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're very deep intellectual philosophical questions. Really? Like, would you prefer to have hiccups for the rest of your life or always feel like you're about to sneeze but unable to? Oh, I think it has to be sneeze. I don't think I'll cut with hiccup in. No. Sad. I, I know, I have that thing where you have to stare at a light mm -hmm. when, when you like you need to sneeze, but constant hiccup in. How do you eat? I think it's late in hiccup. No, I think I'd definitely go for the... The wanting to sneeze but can't thing. Yeah, Although there's a great release from a sneeze, isn't there? I do enjoy a good sneeze. Ah, me too. See, I've got, I've got a nine-month-old puppy. Yeah. Who also loves a sneeze. Oh. I have a sneeze and he will run up and stick his face there. <laughs> going, have you just sneezed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's only him that causes the sneeze, to be fair. <laughs> Probably a slight allergy or something. Slight allergy yeah. to my own dog, yeah. Um, <laughs> next question. OK, would you prefer to be able to control the weather or time? Oh, time. Time, really? I can get with a bit of rain, snow and sun. I can, do all, I can do all that. But time, whip that clock back, change that face. And it's, it's controlling time, not travelling time. Oh. <laughs> well, surely by controlling it, I'd be able to go back. Uh, but would you be the same person going back? No. <laughs> OK. <laughs> We've added rules that mean, no, I'm going to get young again. I'd take, I'd take far more risks <laughs> than I did, okay. I think, in the past and probably would have got involved in musical earlier than I had did. OK, so saying yes more. Yes. I think we've learnt a lot about Sharon West there, so thank you very much for that, Sharon. You're very welcome. So that's almost the end of the show, so remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv, and, of course, on YouTube and podcast, just search for Chewing the Could. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Okay. Oh, the old chick, what one on the camera?